So, you want to know what the ultimate guard dog breed is? Well, today's second quarterfinal contest sees the Rottweiler and the Dogo Argentino looking to eliminate each other and move on to the semi-finals. Welcome back to the Canine Show's Ultimate Dog Championships Guard Dog Edition. I'm Will and on this channel I make videos just like this one to educate people all about amazing dog breeds. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Before we get into round one of our five round fight, I want to quickly thank today's sponsor, Kong. Any long time viewers will know that Kong is my number one recommended brand in the dog world and I'm honored to be working with them. Although I've tried their entire range and they have some awesome toys and puzzles, you still can't beat the good old original Kong. I personally own six of these and I fill them with meat and freeze them and then use them to help with nearly 100% of behavioural interventions as well as with my dogs. Sully here gets them every single day to continue helping with his mental stimulation, positive crate associations and then positive chewing options. But without further ado, let's get straight into round one of our five round fight. Whoever wins the most rounds progresses to the semi-finals. Round number one. The intimidation factor. For many people that don't know much about dogs, when you ask them about a scary dog, a dangerous dog, or any form of guard dog, it's very likely that they conjure up an image of a Rottweiler and its reputation that seems to follow this glorious breed. Males can grow upwards of 69 centimeters or 27 inches, weighing up to a 60 kilos or 130 pounds, with females being a little bit smaller and lighter than their male counterparts. So obviously they are large dogs, but not as big as some other guarding breeds. They are, however, extremely muscled and beautifully portion with dogs exceptionally developed deep chests and with very powerful legs. Their heads are fairly broad but not as broad as many mastiff breeds and they have slight wrinkling on their faces when they are interested by something or focused on a task otherwise they have nice tight coats across their faces. They have a perfect scissor bite where their upper teeth and their lower teeth neatly overlap and their colouring is one of the most recognisable traits of the Rotti. Their undercoat is short and grey, black or fawn, but whatever the colour is, it does not show through their medium length, coarser top coat, which sits very flat over all of their bodies, and they have specific colouring, being black with very well defined markings, which includes a spot over each eye and on the dog's cheeks, a strip on each side of their muzzle and on their throat, two triangles on each side of the breast bone, on the dog's front legs carpus down to their toes, inside the dog's back legs that goes from the hock down to their toes. The Dogo is a large breed growing up to 70 centimetres or 27 inches and weighing up to and sometimes over 100 pounds or 45 kilos. For me, the Dogo's appearance is the perfect combination of power and athleticism, having the muscles and size intimidation of a powerful Mastiff, yet the appearance of being incredibly fast and able to hunt you down with ease, similar to the way a Doberman is terrifying. The most distinguishing feature has to be that pure white coat. Under breed standards, they can have a dark patch of coat near one of their eyes, but the patch must not cover more than 10% of the head. However, it is very desirable to have a dogo that is fully white from head down to toe. Being bred to be big game hunters has led this breed to appear the way they do, being required to have the stamina to track, chase and hunt all day, yet the power and size to bring down big game or hold them at bay until their owners arrive. A job that they are known to do fantastically. As working breeds, it's very common to see the ears cropped and sometimes to have the tail docked, although this is less common. This cropping and docking is a common practice to aid the dog when working environments, but due to the foreboding appearance it adds to it's common to see even companion dogs have this done in countries which allow it. What a tough round to have to judge here to start today's contest. There is no doubting or denying both dogs are very, very intimidating and both would be completely and easily able to achieve the feat of scaring off potential bad guys. But as we always need a winner, so let's look a bit more closely at this. I do believe that the Dogo's physicality and build is more impressive, but the darker coat combined with dark eyes of the Rotti give it a very sinister appeal, making this almost too hard to call. But when I put the two side by side and just go with my gut instinct on this, and which breed I'd rather not meet down a dark alley, for me it is the Rottweiler that wins this first round. Round number two, the Bark and Bite Force. The highest bite force of the Rottweiler is pretty commonly reported to be 328 psi, which is a ferocious bite force. Now let's check out the bark of the Rottweiler and see if it compares to its bite. The 
Dogo's bike force is commonly reported to be a whopping 500 psi thanks to that mastiff in its lineage, providing the large blocky head that is perfect for offering an extremely strong bike. Now let's take a look at their bark and see if it matches its bike potential. Both have a ferocious bark and although you regular viewers know I'm skeptical of bite forces until I test them for myself, I have to go with the info we have that says that the Dogo takes the edge. So they win this round, leveling it out one round apiece, going in to the third round of today's contest. Round number three, trainability. So right off the bat, we know the Rotti is considered to be one of the most intelligent breeds on the planet, but that doesn't always make for the most trainable as eagerness to please and a lack of independence helps in this field massively, which makes this round for the Rotti not quite as simple as just one of the smartest dogs on the planet. Now when well socialized and trained by an experienced owner that can set out the clear and consistent rules and boundaries following a positive training method, you will have a confident dog that will look solely to you for direction. Now this Rotti is a dream to chain and will make it for an incredibly obedient dog, both in the working and family environment. However, should you get this wrong, it's common for a Rotti to develop into a more dominant and independent character that will be happy to make decisions for itself and this is where problems arise for the breed. This isn't something that's specific to Rotties, almost all breeds will do this with poor training, leadership and socialisation, but the potential ramifications for a powerful and intelligent breed like the Rotti is far worse than other breeds, and it is this that has led, led to their unfair reputation, and them taking the blame for poor ownership from humans. So with all of this in mind, if this is a breed you're considering, they have the potential to be the perfect companion or working dogs, but please make sure you are capable, experienced and well educated before or you take the plunge. The Dogo presents us with almost identical issues that the Rotti does. They are incredibly intelligent and capable of being superb working dogs that are very commonly used to great effect all around the world. Unfortunately, there is still a common myth that these large guarding breeds need to be trained and handled with an aggressive punitive approach to put them in their place. However, canine behavioral psychology has widely discredited this across all domesticated dog breeds, and their size or working role doesn't change this, and this style of training often leads to untrusting, scared, and therefore for unpredictable Dogo Argentinos that being so large and powerful have the potential to do serious damage, which is exactly why the breed is banned here in the UK. However, with consistent leadership where you build a trusting relationship where the Dogo can look to you for direction, combined with the fact that it has a fantastic eagerness to please, they absolutely thrive as wonderful companion dogs as well as working dogs in guarding and hunting roles. Both breeds are unfortunately and unfairly carrying the weight of a bad reputation, but both breeds are capable of extremely high levels of obedience and trainability. However, in terms of judging between the two, I can't go against the Rotti being one of the most intelligent and in the right hands, trainable dogs in the world. Round number four, health and life expectancy. It is widely accepted that the average life expectancy of a Rotti is between eight and 10 years, which isn't too bad for such a large, powerful breed. Like all breeds, this can be extended with high quality diet and a healthy, active lifestyle. The Rotti is prone to some hereditary health issues that include the following. Cancer, entropion and ectropion, which is where the eyelids have issues, cruciate ligament rupture, wet eczema, cold water tail, hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, which both dogs should be tested for if used in a breeding program, bloat or gastric torsion, and they're also prone to obesity, aortic stenosis, and they, some dogs do have known to have temperament issues. The Dogo also has a decent lifespan, usually being between 10 and 12 years, but again, it's not rare to have a breed exceed this when well cared for. The Dogo has been well bred, has been bred to be robust and healthy to take on in its working roles effectively. However, they do have a few health issues that seem to affect the breed most, including deafness, which is common in all white coated dogs, hip dysplasia, and autoimmune thyroiditis. The Dogo takes this round with a longer life expectancy and fewer common health issues, making this contest two rounds each going into the fifth, final, and deciding round. Round number five. Fearless loyalty. Rotties were bred to protect and guard and have been used for this task for years. They do have an unfair reputation of being a dangerous breed, but this doesn't change the fact that they are extremely capable of superb guarding work and they are renowned for being totally devoted to their families, showing incredible levels of loyalty to their loved ones with zero fear of repercussions for themselves. 
This is another reason why owners need to be well educated in properly socializing and training a Rottweiler, as they need to understand when it's appropriate to utilize their guarding skills, which for many of us is but a tiny, tiny fraction of their lives. The Dogo is renowned for being extremely loyal and absolutely desires to be with their family as much as possible. They also have a very strong prey drive and are completely fearless in the face of big game. They are very territorial and can be hostile towards strangers and easily misreads things as potential threats which makes socialising a dogo of utmost importance as it's imperative for the safety of the dog and the people it meets that it understands that not all strangers are a threat. Being alert is a good thing but more than that can be dangerous if you're not in complete control of the dog at all. So here we are and I must admit I hate when these contests come down to this last round but we need a winner so for us to move forward with the contest I will choose even though both are undeniably fearless guardians. Like I mentioned earlier dogos are banned here in the UK so I don't have the first hand experience I do with rotties so I'm trying to rely more on academic research which is very hard with such a subjective decision like this one. All that being said, I have made my decision and I'm going with the Rotti, who very well may be the most fearless and deeply loyal breed on the planet. So the Rotti does win this very close contest three rounds to two and advances to the semi-finals of our tournament where he will take on the Turkish Kangal. Click top left to see the entire playlist for all the contests in this tournament or click the bottom left video for another one of my videos that I think you will enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and I'll see you on the next episode of The Canine Show.